Great job with those lists. We can't wait to see them when you share them with us. For us, being a scientist is all about answering questions. And we do this using five simple steps. You start off with a question. And this could be an observation that you've made or a bit of research that you've done, something that you're curious about. The next is that you come up with a guess or a hypothesis to that question. What do you think the answer might be? After that, you do your experiment. Now this is where you're going out and you're actually trying to find out that answer. You then have results that you have to collect and analyze. That means figuring out if there's some sort of pattern to all of your results and what the answer actually is. And the final part to all of this is to actually share what you've done. So you communicate this with people around you. It could be your family or your friends, or it could be the entire world like we are here. So we'll run through a quick example of how you could do this at home. Your question might be, I wonder when do people walk their dogs? Your hypothesis could be, I think people walk their dogs in the evening. So you then set out to do your experiment. Now with this, there's a few parts involved. You want to create a list of steps that you're gonna take during your experiment. This way, anyone else in the entire world could copy your experiment and hopefully get the same results that you do. So for this experiment, I'm going to, hmm, let me think about it. I'm going to stare out my window onto the street for five minutes for each hour in a day. We'll start at 7 a.m. and we'll go until 7 p.m. And I'll write down the number of dogs I see during all of this time. So that's part of my results done. So then I record my results along with any extra observations I might have made. Was it really sunny outside? Was it really rainy outside? Maybe that could affect how many dogs I see. Maybe there was one person walking 20 or 30 dogs. So I want to write that down as well, because that might affect the way that I analyze my results later on. So that you then have your results. And for my example here, I found out that more people walk their dogs in the morning than in the evening. So my hypothesis was wrong, but that's okay. That's what science is all about, is having a hypothesis and testing it to see if it's right or wrong. And if it's wrong, that's perfectly fine. The next is to communicate my results. So I might do this through a presentation, like show and tell. Maybe I want to make a video exploring everything I went through. Or I could draw a poster and present it to my family at dinner tonight. And that's it. That's how you can be a scientist at home. You just have to follow those five simple steps. But what about wearing lab coats or safety glasses and working in a laboratory? Here at Mui, we're a special type of scientist. We're a marine biologist. Marine, meaning the sea, and biology, meaning the study of living things. So we study things that live underwater. And we don't have lab coats or safety glasses, but we do have some other types of special equipment that we need to do our research. One example are our fins, mask, and snorkel. We need this to be able to do our snorkels and breathe while our head is underwater. Maybe we want to stay underwater for even longer periods of time. So then we'll use scuba equipment like this here. One of the most important things to do is to be able to take photos and videos while we are underwater. So we'll be using cameras with special underwater housing like this here. So now that we know what a scientist does and what marine biologists study, we can have a go at being a marine biologist ourselves at home. Now remember, we will have to stick to whatever rules are in place for our own safety. So if you can't go outside, then please don't go outside. Now to make this experiment, all you have to do is remember the five steps that we have. The first is to have a question. So this could be some sort of observation that you've made or something that you're curious about. The next is to have a guess or a hypothesis. What do you think the answer will be to that question? Then make your experiment. Make sure to write down all of the different things that you're going to do in your experiment 
So anyone else in the entire world could repeat it and get the same results that you do. The next is to get your results. So during your experiment, you want to be writing things down as well as any different observations you might make. With that example earlier, is it sunny outside? Is it raining outside? What things will affect your experiment? You then need to analyze these results and come up with a conclusion. Is there a pattern in what you found? Have you got an answer to your question and hypothesis? If your hypothesis is wrong, that's okay. That's what science is all about. Figuring out if it's right or wrong. And then the final part is to share and communicate what our experiment was and what it found out. So you can do this with your family at home. You can do a show and tell presentation. You can make a video or draw a poster. A little tip with sharing your experiments. You want to be able to summarize everything that you've done and the results that you found out in maybe two or three sentences. That way, if people are interested to hear more and more, you can then tell them that extra information. Try this out over the next week with your family while you're at home and make sure to share it with us as well. We'd love to see your experiments and what sort of results that you came up with.